HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Hello and welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with what's happening in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, the Select Board approved Chief Lee's new hire, several Hopkinton Scouts received proclamations, and the Hopkinton Police Department hosted their annual National Night Out event. But first, here are some happenings in town you should know about. The Planning Board is looking for someone to fill a vacancy on the board the term would last until the May 2020 election. Those interested should be a registered voter in Hopkinton and apply online by Tuesday, August 27th. You can find more details on our website, hcam.tv. Greyhound Friends recently released a press release stating that they were approved by the town for a kennel license. Greyhound Friends still has to be approved by the state to officially open. The facility is under new leadership. Ashland Allegiant Baseball hosted their annual end-of-the-season banquet. The team had their best run in post history, finishing 21-5 and overall and finishing second in the state. Captains Cole Glassburn, Jackson Horning, and Sean Jewett hilariously attempted to hang the Zone 5 champion state runner-up banner at the Ashland Legion Post facility. The select board approved and welcomed Officer Tyler Brabham to the Hopkinton Police Department. Here's a look. I'd like to present to you uh, Tyler Brabham for your consideration for appointment for a uh, police officer. Um, I'll get this out of the way, Mr. Rack, because I usually like, uh, you'd like to find out how this position came about. This was, uh, we were able to add to the police department and this year's uh, budget. Uh, to create a detective sergeant spot and Tyler will be backfilling through the uh, patrol force. Uh, we had several applicants for the position. I uh, just want to thank a few few people involved that helped out in both first and second round interviews. Uh, Scott Van Ralton, uh, Phil Powers, Kristen Merrill, um, myself, and uh, uh, Lieutenant Porter and Deputy Chief Bennett who did the final uh, interviews. Um, Tyler rose to, to the top and uh, did an outstanding job for a, for a young man, but we're glad to have him aboard if you uh, wish to appoint. He grew up in the town of Blackstone, Mass. There he lived with his mother and father, Craig, and Michelle. I happened to uh, know with that. I had the opportunity to work with him in the Woonsocket Police Department many years ago. And, he left us for the Mass State Police where he's a sergeant in the K-9 unit. And uh, if he's half as good as uh, his dad, he'll be a great cop. He has two brothers, Kyle and Zach. Tyler attended Boxstone Millville Regional High School. On the top of his studies, he was the class treasurer and was part of the soccer, basketball, and tennis team. He also received the Joseph Struzik Student Athlete Award, which recognized him for outstanding performance, athletics, as well as the classroom. In 2015, Tyler attended the Fitchburg State University and joined the 4 Plus 1 program. This program includes a bachelor's degree while building a municipal police academy status uh, and obtained uh, academy certification, which started May of 2019. 
uh, as he continues on, he will immediately begin a master's uh, program. During his undergrad, he played soccer for the university and served as captain for his junior and senior year. The team was part uh, of a team impact of a uh, national profit that connects children facing serious and chronic illnesses with local college athletes. He was also a member of the Student Athletic Advisory Committee. The group is advocating for giving back to the community, enhancing the experience of athletes part of the NCAA. Uh, my pleasure to introduce Tyler Bravo. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks. How are you doing, Tyler? Doing great. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thanks for showing up. <laughs> um, to tell us a little bit about yourself, stuff that the chief didn't. Sure. Um, so, like you said, I'm part of the um, 4 plus 1 program at Pittsburgh State. Um, it's a unique, pro unique program. Um, there's only nine of us, so we get plenty of training and attention for Police Academy. Um, this September, I'll be going with my master's, um, which will take about a year and a half. A year and a half. Um, yeah, I mean, I just want to give back to the community. This place seems amazing. Everyone I've met here is, seems fantastic. Um, starting with the police officers, for one, and two, just the workers around in the community. I mean, everyone's been so helpful, especially HR and stuff with all the paperwork and you know things that I had to comprehend. So yeah, everyone's been amazing. So thank you for having me tonight. So. Thanks. Board members, any questions for Mr. Bravo? Don't really. OK. But, yeah. I think you made a smart decision getting as far away from one socket as you could. <laughs> <laughs> and we're uh, we're very glad uh, the fact that you can uh, that you made it through the screening process and you're the one that came to the top. Uh, so I much. think that speaks volumes. Um, I have a friend whose uh, whose kid is going through that four plus one program right now, starting it in the fall. Awesome. It's a great program. It really is. It really is. So, uh, Mr. Catino, I will accept a motion if you'd like to make one. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to appoint Tyler Brabham as the as a police officer for the town of Hopkinton. Second that. Okay, any further questions, discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstentions? And it passes. Thank you. Welcome aboard. Thank you so much. All right, show me the love, people. Show me the, turn the camera on. Oh, there it is. One more time. Now this time with some smiles, people. All right. Man, I'm seeing some angry faces. I see we've got some less angry faces. I'm sure this is helping a lot. Coming up next on HCAM News, several Hopkinton scouts were honored. The Hopkinton Police Department hosted National Night Out. And Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider. A whole lot more ahead. Stay tuned. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers. Thank you. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Come to Western Nurseries on Saturday, September 7th for our third annual Blooms, Brews, and Barbecue event. Enjoy barbecue from PJ's and Gotta Q. Hot dogs from Snappy Dogs, fresh homemade ice cream from Yulman's, and beer and wine from Marty's Liquors. The F-Tones, Hot Acoustics, The Rationales, and South Street Band will be providing the beats. Join us for a day filled with food, fun, and friends. All proceeds benefit the Jimmy Fund, brought to you by Marty's Liquors and Western Nurseries. For more details, go to westernnurseries.com. Welcome back to HCAM News. Several scouts recently received proclamations from the select board. Here's a look. A pair of Hopkinton Girl Scouts were at the select board meeting to receive proclamations for receiving the Girl Scout Gold Award. Girl Scout Emma Bograd worked on a dog park project to help establish regulations and safety protocols. Have worked to find, gather information um, spanning nine different dog parks, uh, surveying 100 people, both about how much they know about how to keep their dogs safe in the dog park, social, socialization of dogs in the dog park, and how often it's used and how many people and dogs they usually see on a typical basis. Um, on top of that, I've worked on gathering information about the rules and regulations for, for the dog park um, in order to present a set of rules and regulations for our 
hopefully future dog park, um, to make sure that everything is safe and that the rules are, are in line with what some of the dog parks are in the area, but also in line with how to make sure that ours is our own, but still safe and um, so after that, I also worked on creating a class. So this class was on safety for the dog park so that people can socialize their dogs there safely so that they don't have to develop any fear aggression and they aren't just left at home. Girl Scout Mallory Pishoff tried to integrate different parts of the community through music. Awesome. All right, Mallory, why don't you tell us a little something about what you did? Um, well, the, a big part of my project was trying to integrate different parts of the community through something that can be shared. And with mine, I chose to try and integrate different aspects of music, including bringing members of the Golden Pond community to be able to come to the Hopkinton High School Pops concert in the spring, which is something that allows them to both be able to go out into the community, meet new people, and be exposed to what different things are happening with the music association and the stuff coming out of the high school in that degree. And I did a lot including organizing different aspects of the thing, of the, thing, of the concert, including the arranged seating that they do for that specific concert, including reserving seats, allowing ease of access for those coming from Bone Pond to be able to enter early be seated before crowds come in, transportation from the facility to and from the facility, and being recognized by the concert and the community in throughout the thing. Three Boy Scouts also received proclamations for receiving the rank of Eagle Scout, Patrick Barnes, and Jack Riley worked on a soapbox car. Good to see you. So me and Jack's Eagle Project was we built a two-person soapbox derby car for an able-bodied driver and a um, autistic or anybody that can't race on their own that needs help. And I was inspired to do this because I have an autistic cousin and my mom works with the special ed students. And I've been, I raced soapbox for eight years and I'd always see the cars at the races and they would be side by side, and they'd go down the hill. And when I proposed this idea to my dad, he thought we should do a front and back. And when we decided we wanted to do this, I had mentioned it to Jack. And he thought it was a cool idea, so he hopped on it with me. We both made our own, and the project took a lot of time. He has pictures. Yeah. It took us a little over a year, uh, over 800 hours. But in the end, they came out really well. Jack brought them to a race, the kids loved them, and they go to Massachusetts local soapbox derby organization, which is in Arlington, but anybody from around the state can go and race the cars. But just 900 cuts of wood, 800 hours to make the thing, oh, tons of time sunk into it, it took us almost a year and a half, and overall, we, seeing how it came out, seeing the kids' <coughs> reaction, we wouldn't take any of it back. Yeah. Well, there's a lot through it too. Yeah. Yeah. Ethan Kramer built some fresh new picnic tables for the Michael Liznow Respite Center. Um, so my project, um, I went down to the Respite Center um, uh, and I bought them some nice pressure treated wood uh, from Hopkins and Lumber and I built them uh, picnic tables to uh, like not only replace to the the ones that they had, but kind of just add on because um, the existing picnic tables they had in their uh, recreational area were kind of weather beaten and um, not as sturdily made. Um, so I wanted to give them something that would uh, last a while. So I uh, bought the wood from Hopping and Lumber, uh, cut it with uh, friends of mine, and uh, like screwed the uh, like the hole, like drilled the holes and uh, put the bolts in and put it all together and then uh, finished it with a uh, uh, stain so that it would be more res resilient to the weather. And um, I also took a slide of theirs and uh, washed it and repainted it for them. Awesome. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of, I decided to do my project at the Respite Center um, because uh, not only did I just 
always know that the people who work at the respite center um, put in countless hours and just extreme uh, effort. The Hopkinton Police Department hosted their National Night Out event recently. The event brings together community with their local law enforcement throughout the country. Here's a look. The annual Hopkinton Police Department National Night Out event took place at the Hopkinton Town Common. A big turnout was on hand and a number of vendors were on the scene. So as part of this event, um, we're promoting the tick education and outreach we're doing in town, vaping and substance abuse programming that we're doing in the community. So we've got you know, locally specific brochures that we put together, uh, coupled with um, some of the state uh, Department of Public Health information and then just looking to educate people about you know, what the department's doing in general um, throughout the community. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Awesome. So, yeah. And teaching parents what a jewel looks like. Ah, that's, okay. the, that's the key thing right now, is right. educating people about what, you know, what to look for in their kids. So, you know, it's a jewel and it's a uh, battery. A charger for a computer. So, uh, so we're going to be offering a lot more education on that coming up this September to both parents and the students. Awesome. Fuel Up to Play 60 is a campaign that's going on between the National Dairy Council and the NFL. So we go to local communities such as this one and we also go to Patriots Training Camp and we promote healthy eating for kids and exercise and we just like to have fun with the kids and have them learn something today and then we give them a prize. So it's just fun for everybody. So the wheel is for just for kids and they can come up and they can learn a little bit more about how to stay active and eat healthy different foods and what they should be eating every day. So we just want kids to come up and spin it. Well, we're uh, still right in the middle of it, but I, I think this is probably the um, uh, most attended event we've had over the years. And it's really starting to catch on, and we're really bringing the police and the community together to work on solving problems. And the whole essence of this is crime prevention, and we're doing our best to educate the public and just work with the public and let them know. <laughs> All right, that kid's going to get arrested. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> but, um, no, seriously, it's all about, you know, communication and, and letting the uh, public know the, what we do on a daily basis. And we've always had a great partnership with the, the citizens, and uh, you couldn't ask for a better community when it comes to the police and the community working together. Can you talk about some of the different officers you have here today? Oh, well, we have uh, most of our, pretty much have our whole department here, but uh, this is a big year because this is the first year that we're going to do a uh, demonstration with our newest K-9 Titan. And I know a lot of people are looking forward to that. And today's my birthday, and... Um, oh, happy birthday. Well, thank you. And I guess there might be a surprise for me on my birthday. I, I think I might have to take a bite on the sleeve. I'm not too excited about it. Uh -oh. <laughs> Those in attendance also got a first-hand look at the Hopkinton K-9 unit in action. Sure, so I work um, obviously here at Hopkinton Police Department. Um, hi there, hello buddy. Um, my dog is a one and a half-ish year old German Shepherd and we just recently got out of um, Police Academy for patrol. 
through Boston Police Canine Academy. Um, he was one of my classmates too. So uh, during that 14 week period, we got certified in um, tracking, um, criminal apprehension, building searches, area searches, evidence searches, um, agility, obedience. obedience. Am I missing anything else? No. So we got done with that class in January and then um, we both went right back into secondary school, detection school, um, where my dog got certified in explosive detection. Um, again, that was through Boston Police Canine Academy and that was a 10 week course. And um, Mike's dog got certified in narcotics, six weeks course through uh, Plymouth County. Okay, very nice. Um, so what are you showing the kids here uh, today? Um, basically, everything that we just explained to you. We're going to do um, some brief demonstrations on what the dogs are capable of doing. Um, we're going to run through um, basically what I just told you, what we're capable of, um, bring out some equipment, explain what each one of those is used for in our training, and then I will bring the dogs out and show you some exercises. So what I'm going to have my dog do is going to be called an evidence search. So in my pocket here I have a knife. I'm going to throw it, I'm going to throw it out into the grass. Quiet. I'm going to throw it out to the grass. He's not going to be able to see it. He's just going to look, with, he's going to search with his nose, and he's going to let me know when he found it by laying down on it. There is a whole lot of programming coming up on the HCAM channels. Freshly back from vacation is Matt Clark to tell you all about it. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's edition of the HCAM Insider. I'm Matt Clark and I'm here to tell you what's happening this week on HCAM. On Tuesday, August 20th at 7.30 p.m., the Conservation Commission meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Wednesday, August 21st at 8 p.m., Terry Molisi prepares an appreciatory dinner for Hopkins Fire and Police Departments in a new episode of The Gathering. And on Thursday, August 22nd at 8 p.m., Southbound Train performs in this summer's final edition of the Concerts on the Common. And on HCAM Ed, the Ashland Legion Baseball vs. Natick game will air. If you want to know more about all of HCAM's shows before they air, then head over to hcam.tv connect, where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. That's all for this week's Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and as always, thanks for watching. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Matt. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget to check out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our social media pages to keep up with all the happenings in Hopkinton. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. 
email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Take care, and we'll talk to you again soon. This is hit high in the air, over to left center, to the wall, and it's going to land in front of the wall. Runner being waved around. Here comes Brandon Grover, and he will score the first post-77 run of the season. It's an RBI triple for Jackson Hornung. That one is low, and here comes Hornung to try to score, and he will easily 2-0 post-77. We met early today. Uh, a couple hours before the game, and we talked about having an approach, um, what that means, what it should be, um, and they came out and they executed that perfectly. You know, they were uh, they were fantastic. I mean, it was great. These guys love backing me up. They back up everyone, so they knew uh, we were still down a little bit from that game a couple days ago. But they just picked us up. knew uh, They knew we had to go out here today and get a W. So you know, first goal of the year was to get more. Uh, wins than last year, so we had to start off today strong, so, you yeah. And this is hit in the air over to center field. That'll get down. Sam Farrell will cross home plate, and Brennan Grover still marching up towards second. It's an RBI double. Got some wheels like Brandon Grover. Fari working from the stretch. Rudder taking off. This is hit in the air over to center field. That'll get down for a hit. And now being waved around is Hornung. Here he comes, and he will score. It's going to be an RBI double for Dom Cavanaugh. Well, as a team, we definitely came in, like, fired up, ready to score some runs, play defense. And um, it felt good right away to, you know, get some runs in. And, um, you know, I guess we just focused all game and tried to do what we do best, which is just, you know, I don't know, score runs and play D. Uh, it seems like uh, you guys have a laid-back attitude and seem to have a lot of fun out there playing with each other. Uh, what's it been like playing with this group? Um, we're laid back, but um, we also have like, um, you know, we're we're serious at the same time, and we we have goals and we're doing everything with purpose. So, but it's definitely really fun, especially because we all get along and we're winning. So, the left and the pitch. And he'll get a piece of this one into left field. It goes past the reach of the shortstop. Lead runner being waved around.